Program four at the Brit Festival Orchestra is what I call the three Bs. Normally that's Bach, Beethoven, and Brahms, I think. But in this case, it's Beethoven, Barber, and Bialava. Let's start with Beethoven. This is Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. I'm not sure that I even need to tell you anything more than Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, the most famous four notes in all of music. We actually did the Beethoven Fifth Symphony in my very first season as music director at the Brit Festival Orchestra. And now that this is my 10th season, I thought it would be great to bring it back, see where things are, see where we all stand, and celebrate the orchestra with one of the most iconic pieces of music in history. It's just a piece that every time you hear, you feel like that's why music exists. That's why orchestras exist. And if that ending doesn't make you feel positive about life in general, then I don't know if anything will. Next, we're going to Barber's Great Violin Concerto. We have a spectacular soloist on this program, Alexi Kenny. He's a younger violinist, but he's already achieved a world-famous reputation for his artistry, not only for his virtuosic approach to concerti, but also the beauty of his tone and his ability to spin a really, really beautiful phrase. He's going to be playing a concerto that is maybe considered America's great violin concerto. Barber had all kinds of sensibilities. As an American composer, he was able to find a unique American style, that's true, but Barber was also a romantic at heart. And this concerto traverses all of those musical domains. It has the virtuosity, the kind of uh, aggressive intensity in its third movement, the kind of thing that makes violinists very fearful of trying to get in that movement fast enough the way Barber intended it, but it also has the incredible legato simplicity, the melodic contours that you come to expect from the composer who wrote the Barber Adagio. And the first movement, I think, is one of the most touching, nostalgic pieces in the entire repertoire. The piece always moves me every time that I hear it or play it. I'm so glad that we're presenting it on this program because I think it balances the other two pieces perfectly. And let's get to the very opening piece on this program. This will be just the second performance of this piece of music, which I actually commissioned to be played by the Louisville Orchestra. Lisa Bialava is a spectacular artist. She is a world-class singer, a great composer and thinker, educator, and I just love her music and her approach to music making. She really has the question of what it means to be in control in mind when she wrote this piece. Because normally we think about control in a pretty simple fashion. The conductor waves his or her arms, the orchestra plays music that the composer wrote. But in this case, Lisa is questioning that very process. Who really is in charge? Who is following whose bidding? So the piece has all kinds of interesting elements, like a group of musicians that actually goes out into the audience, in this case on the hill, and plays things that indicate when I have to start conducting. There's a moment when I have to go switch over to the piano role, and somebody from the orchestra takes over the conducting process. And in the end, there is even a part of the music where the orchestra is playing, and depending on what the percussionist actually plays, which instrument that percussionist chooses, the orchestra goes off in a different direction. And all of these great conceits and all of these great ideas, though, adds up to a piece of music that is super cool. It's really beautiful, and it's a very moving experience to actually listen to it. She's composed something that is an incredible piece of music that deserves to be a part of the regularly heard standard repertoire. So you've got to be there to hear just the second performance in the West Coast premiere of Lisa Bialava's Send the Carriage Through. <laughs> 